Alright guys, it's Tesco Grab here and today, this is a video I'm recording long in advance, but I wanted to talk today about the Optic Gaming breakup that has happened over the last couple of months or so and the road that has led to it over the last several years from the Dynasty team, of course, into the separation in the World War II days, then into the Black Ops 4 performances that they had, the great start to the season, the roster change ahead of that season with the switch to 5v5 and, um, and then what we can expect going forwards, of course, now that the team has split up and we have a lot of the big name guys on all the different teams and I'll good this could potentially be for the ecosystem on the whole. Yes, we've talked about my issues that I have with the format and all of these things, um, but look, at the end of the day, the split up of the Optic Gaming team that we've had and this move to a franchise, this really drastic change, has of course spread the players around and it means that there's no clear, of course there still is a clear team that's going to have the most fans, but at the same time it increases the amount of rivalries we're going to be having in the scene if the CDL can exploit those as best as possible, and also it should hopefully diversified to some degree the um the viewership right there's always the issue of the viewership when optic gaming goes out of a tournament the viewership drops and you know i don't expect people who are optic fans to necessarily watch watch all the events um, and watch the games where their favorite team are playing don't expect people to do that but at the end of the day it might be quite nice to have a change of scenery and have uh, some some additional players and fans that have gone to other teams for other players other than the uh, the traditional optic gaming core that had yeah, so many fans so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today probably a beneficial thing on the whole but of course uh, you know at, at the end of the day all teams break up even though I'm sure it's disappointing for a lot of uh, fans of that team who really liked it at the time so yeah like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you are new as always I would greatly appreciate it what I'm going to do effectively is I'm going to run through the um, the history of Optic Gaming this is all of the tournaments and the online tournaments they have ever played total prize that they ever won was um, just over three million dollars uh, over the team pretty good going so so yeah this is the squad and of course back in the day from Modern Warfare three times Scump, Nadeshot, these were the guys building the Optic Gaming brand pretty much on uh, on their YouTube channels and through streaming and all of these things. These guys absolutely, and of course there was more to it than that, right? Hector behind the scenes, Big Timer as well, of course, is on this team. Um, but, you know, Nadeshot and Scump were the main guys. And they were building the Optic Gaming brand pretty much to what it is today. And a lot of fans that came in to watch the scene around these like Black Ops 2 days particularly came in, as did I, through Scump and Nature watching these guys' videos and um, you know, kind of fell in love with the team, fell in love with the Optic Gaming brand and of course all the content it was coming out with. No other team was matching it, no other team was, was managing to do it. So that's where Optic Gaming started out and that's why they were the most popular team by far and continue to be um, all the way through Call of Duty history pretty Pretty much. So in the Black Ops 2 days, they're the Merc, Big Timer, Scump, and Nadeshot team. And back in these days, they, they were like an underdog team, right? They won this event at UMG Chicago, but you know, they were always kind of um, under the thumb of complexity and these guys. Uh, and then of course, you know, in the game battles and um, the, the 2Ks and all of these things towards the end of Black Ops 2, then they go into Ghost and things change up a little bit. Of course, uh, they have the whole situation where Scump was on this team and then he left very briefly in the January to go to Envy. And um, um, I just wanted to mention that really quickly because Scump leaving this team for the couple of weeks that he did at the start of 2014, like that that could have drastically changed the history of Call of Duty if he didn't return to uh, to Optic Gaming just a couple of weeks later. So he left to go to Envy a couple of weeks later, then he rejoined Optic after they decided to completely overhaul the team. And um, yeah, they got rid of uh, Ricky and, uh, you know, Big Timer and uh, the guys that were on the team before. They even tried out like Parasite and Saints in this team for a little bit. And then they got Embos and Clayster in. And um, again, a pretty legendary team, a team that wasn't on the top of their game, that didn't necessarily have too much success. They go to the World Championship. They come third at the end of the day with this squad. Um, and then they switch things up again. They get rid of Bows. They bring in Proofy. And the, this was just a legendary roster, right? When they won the X Games, especially just great moments. I remember watching that live. And this was kind of the breakthrough moment, really, where there was the Team Calibre team that was strong at the time, but there was also, like, Evil Geniuses and all of this stuff. And, um, you know, Optic Gaming being the fan favourite team, finally getting the better of the, the organisation that had haunted them for so long, was just such a fantastic moment in the community. Then things went downhill a little bit. They started playing with Karma, experimenting, you know, in a 2K. He got, you know, he had to substitute in for Clayster in this 2K. So then, okay, things going forwards. Then into the Advanced Warfare days. Then we bring in Formal and Crim 6 and the, the scene changes dramatically. Nade shots in this team, of course. 
And it really builds through uh, through the next couple of years. So through Advanced Warfare, this team and the dynasty is starting to be formed. And this goes up to the World Championship defeat. So they come 7th of the Call of Duty World Championship 2015 when they were expected to go in and win. Look at all these number ones. The Obda Gaming, um, effectively what the team was like, changed during this period, right? Because you had the ghost days where they were the underdog. They weren't expected to win. But when they did, it was such a great moment. Now in Advanced Warfare, after, with this team coming into play, they were pretty much expected to be you know, the best team in the game. They were dominating all the all the online stuff. Um, they they won UMG Orlando. They came second at the Columbus Open at the start of the year. They won the the regional final to to qualify for champs. So, and the, you know, they won the stage one playoffs. So they came in looking like what was going to be the dominant force and the team that was going to win the world championship because they'd brought Formal and Crimsix onto the team. And uh, this is when the Scump Crimsix kind of duo ship started. But they kind of, um, the, the theme around Opta Gaming had changed from being kind of underdogs to now being favorites, which almost meant that, you know, the fan base was ever more increasing, right? And as teams and more fans were coming to Call of Duty during this period, they'd be exposed to Opta Gaming a lot. And that's where the fan, the fan base really did grow. Of course, they didn't win the World Championship, Nature Shop decided to retire, and then Optic brought Karma into the team, of course, and then they became even more of a favourite, right, than they already were. So, yeah, we had Karma in the team, and this is when the dynasty begun. ESWC, Gfinity, California um, dominated the playoffs, all of these tournaments. It was just absolutely, you know, just demolished everything all the way through Advanced Warfare. And you can see how many events there were in Advanced Warfare. We're still going here, by the way, um, through all of these events. And, yeah, MLG World Finals, all the ones in the column, and this was the era where probably their fan base was, um, was maybe growing the quickest because Advanced Warfare is a pretty popular game. A lot of people were watching during this period and I maybe came in really properly back into the scene. I watched the the Ghost and Black Ops 2 days a bit. Uh, that kind of fell out for a little bit and then I came back in the Black Ops 3 days but a lot of the time their fan base was, was growing like crazy with this Dynasty roster and this continued right through the Black Ops 3 days. Same Dynasty and this was kind of um, where they were still the dominant force. They were still considered the Dynasty at this time but they didn't have the, the performances at the World, the World League championship like like they were hoping to have of course and then of course going to the infinite warfare season they finally get it done a tougher start to the season but the dynasty they bring it back and yeah just a legendary roster because it lasted so long they had so many fans it really built up to a point of um you know just just being the dominant force in the scene and yeah this is the squad so then we go into the world war ii season and this is where things really started to fall apart for the Opta gaming squad they did well early online uh, the dallas open they did pretty well as well considering it was the first event of the year typically up to gaming on so great in those those kind of environments it tended to be the way especially in black ops 3 for example where they'd start up maybe kind of slow at the start of the year then they really brought it back um same thing in infinite warfare as well but in world war 2 it was a slightly different story because it just kept getting worse and worse after new orleans after atlanta after birmingham the team effectively was going to come to an end. Yes, they came fourth at Birmingham. They had a decent result. They lost game five, uh, round 11 to splice at that tournament, even though they were looking pretty damn good. Um, Atlanta as well, fifth, sixth. And then at Seattle, they just had an awful performance, out of the money even, um, top 16. And this spelt the end of this team, right? Then they decided to make the change. Uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a pretty change at the end of the day. A lot of, uh, a lot of rivalries and stuff building within the team. Karma was gone, Crimsic stayed and Formal left to go to Luminosity Gaming as well. So the team split at this point um, and then they brought in Octane and Methods. And at this point, I probably thought that maybe um, the, the splitting of this team would create some sort of differentials in the fan base. I thought, okay, Optic Gaming is split up. Maybe the fan base will move slightly from Optic and maybe a few people will follow Karma um, and will, will follow Formal. The issue is Karma didn't compete right for the rest of the year. He retired effectively for that few months which meant that he didn't go onto a team for people now to support. Karma's a very popular player and formal yeah pretty damn popular guy but at the same time he went on to Luminosity and some people supported it but most people stayed with Scump and the guys that got them into the game which I think is why a lot of people are going to do now right. Most people are going to stay with Scump and formal on this Chicago Huntsman team for the upcoming season and uh, Hector and all that and all of the um, the aspects around that. However, given Karma is going to be competing in the upcoming season and the uh, the additional things that we got to talk about in just a second here with the teams for this upcoming season, um, definitely this has more potential. So with this change, not really many things change. We know that when um, people join the Optic Gaming brand, they instantly become like Optic Gaming superstars. Methods had like so many uh, viewers on his stream and all of this stuff towards the end of the season. They did well in stage two, but playoffs and champs, 
it just didn't work out right we know what happened at the world championship and then of course going into black ops 4 the scene changed again and uh, it went 5v5 firstly and then they decided to completely switch up their team they stuck with this roster for the entire season but they got dashy and they got tj in uh scum crimson and they brought karma of course back onto the squad so formal was still over there on luminosity um the start of the season goes great for optic they win in all the pro downs uh they win the las vegas open and then of course things do start to fall apart towards the latter half of the season Fort Worth was not pretty. They bounced back at London and Anaheim. But, you know, they were basically a top three team this this year towards the end of the season. We know that Crim6 has talked about the problems he had within this squad. How, you know, him, uh, Karma and TP were kind of the, the core trio. And then Scum Dashi and TJ were on the other side of things in terms of maybe maturity. And a lot of ideas that he's discussed over the last few weeks that we've been talking about it. They have a decent result at World Championship at the end of the day. Um, but look, they just decide, okay, it's, it's time to split the team apart and with franchising coming into play people have gone all over the place and we'll have a look at that in just a second so that's our history of optic gaming pretty much through the times this is what i want to talk about in terms of viewership so this is a black ops 4 um pro league and of course we know that when optic gaming are playing that's when we have the the, uh, the biggest viewerships all the biggest matches are the ones involving optic gaming here in the pro league last year um, not incredible viewership but you know not not too bad considering it's a pro league right um, but yeah of course we know that's how it works so this is what we're going to be seeing in the upcoming season. I wonder what your guys' thought process on this is because TJ Dashy, of course, are now on the Opta Gaming team that's still Opta Gaming, but under Los Angeles, joined by Kenny and Slasher. These seem to me to be like the biggest villains in the scene. Some of you guys are, that were Opta Gaming fans last season, I wonder what your thought process is on TJ and Dashy, right? Given that I guess uh, you were fans of theirs in the past season, but now they're still on Optic Gaming, but it's not properly Optic Gaming. What's the thought process here? I don't think many people will stay as fans of this team that were fans of this team. I think mostly 100 Thieves fans will probably be more fans of this team now as kind of the villains, right? And um, to try and upset Chicago and these kind of squads. But these will definitely have some fans and probably some lingering people from the Optic Gaming days that still associate with, with Dashi and TJ quite a bit. Then we have the Seattle squad. So Karma has now gone on to this team and things are changing drastically of course that dynasty roster has completely split up scump and formula still together but we'll have a look at that in just a second here so karma of course on seattle and this time he's actually playing on a roster that is different he's not retiring for the rest of the season as he did at the end of world war ii he's actually playing on a roster i think that there will be some people a significant proportion who really like karma as a player who will support this team over the chicago team because karma is on it i think that's a pretty important factor going forwards um i think this is great on the whole for story lines and for for things of that nature right given the franchising was so drastic and things were inevitably going to change up this uh, is it's a pretty good outcome to be honest now on this team of course this is dallas right we've got crimsix here we've got clayster here all the drama that's going around you know, crimsix scum the the beef effectively that's been happening behind the scenes and has been talked about on twitter as well so yeah a uh, pretty damn big deal on the whole i think that this is going to be a very exciting squad of course that we've seen over the per first couple of weeks then we have the squad the chicago team which effectively is what Optic Gaming used to be and is still now. So Hector, of course, involved with NRG, Scump and Formal on this squad. This is definitely the team that's going to have the biggest fan base. But on the whole, given the split of Optic Gaming, the um, the individuals have gone all over the place. The fan base probably will be spread quite a bit. And there's going to be a lot of rivalries and a lot of uh, storylines to talk about going forwards. Who did the better out of uh, out of the Dynasty team going forwards? Because yes, the Dynasty was split up for a while. Formal went on to Luminosity, but now he's going to be back here alongside Scump. So, you know, the the duo back together so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below on this do you think this is a ground changing moment in call of duty history the breakup how much effect is it going to have on splitting of the fan base and what are your thoughts on the potential storylines we're going to see going forward here so yeah like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new as always i'd greatly appreciate it thanks for watching as always i'll see you next time